How's it going folks? I'm Des with DesFit and watchOS 9 is bringing a ton of new workout features and a lot of those features are for us runners. Now what's cool about watchOS 9 is that it's not just for the newest Apple watches. watchOS 9 is actually being supported on a lot of previous generation Apple watches going all the way back to the Series 4 and I'll be demonstrating a lot of these features on a Series 6 today and as you can imagine watchOS 9 is also going to be available on the newest Apple watches that were just announced. So the first thing I wanted to show you are these new workout views and how you can view these is by simply rotating the digital crown during a workout or swiping up and down. And these are basically additional data pages with more information based on just the information you want to see. Now, as you can imagine, it's kind of hard to film these workout views and run at the same time. So I'll have some screenshots that I took on a run that I just did kind of side by side here. So the first page is the default data page or workout view, which you're already probably familiar with. And this, by the way, is also customizable. But if we scroll down once, next is a custom workout view that I set up for the new advanced running dynamics that are also coming with Watch OS 9. And don't worry, we'll circle back to these here in just one bit. Next is a workout view for heart rate information, including your heart rate zones. Next is a workout view for splits. Then there's going to be another one for segments. And the way segments and splits differ is that segments are manually triggered by double tapping on the screen, where splits are automatically initiated by distance. Next is a workout view for elevation data. Next is running power. And again, this is another new running data feature we'll talk about here in just one bit. And then we have a view for closing your rings. But these workout views are also customizable for which ones we want to see and which ones we want to hide. And there's also some customization for a completely custom workout view. So to customize these, we just need to go into the settings on a particular workout profile by clicking these three little dots in the upper right hand corner. And by the way, this isn't just for running. These workout views are available for other workout profiles as well, like cycling and so on. Next, we just go ahead and click on the pencil icon on any of these workout types, and the workout views are available whether you're doing an open workout, time-based workout, distance, you get the picture. And then from here, we can see all the workout views that are available for a particular workout type, and then we can toggle on or off these views as we wish. You'll notice though that most of these views are dedicated views where you won't be able to customize the fields like the heart rate field, splits, segments, elevation. These are pre-set up fields that you can toggle on or off, but you can't edit the data fields within them. But don't worry, you do have two customizable views where you can customize individual metrics. So we can just click on the little pencil icon for the main workout view. And if we click on any of these, we can change them to other metrics. And then in addition, you can also reorder these workout views to your liking. So if you want to have the elevation field higher up in the stack, you can totally do that if you want. I did notice that on some workout profiles, the workout views were already enabled by default, but others they weren't. So for instance, with swimming, some workout views weren't enabled and same thing goes for something like strength training, but all you have to do is just go into the workout view setting for a particular workout profile and just click that little toggle to show them. Anyhow, these new workout views add a lot more functionality to Apple Watches where you'll be able to view more data on the fly. And I like the fact that you can scroll through these data pages using the digital crown because using a touchscreen to swipe through data pages when you're active and sweaty, it can be a little bit challenging. So rotating the crown just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about some of the new advanced running dynamics data that's being collected. And these include stride length, vertical oscillation, ground contact time, and running power. Stride length is probably pretty self-explanatory, but it's basically the length in between each step. Vertical oscillation is the amount of distance that you're traveling upwards with each stride. And then ground contact time is the amount of time that your foot is staying on the ground with each step. And you can basically piece all these metrics together along with cadence to better assess your running form. And I'll have some articles which I'll have linked down in the description below which dive even deeper into this subject. And I'd also recommend consulting with a running coach which can help you assess your own personal data. Now for the last metric running power, this one can get a little bit complicated, but basically with any activity that we're doing, there's work involved or force involved to get us moving. So with running, it's all about propelling yourself forward with each footstep. In essence, that's what running power is all about, is measuring the amount of force or work. So why do we need to measure that versus something like pace? Because at the end of the day, we all just want to go faster, right? Well, pace can be a great indicator of work when all things are equal. So for instance, if I'm on flat ground with no wind on smooth asphalt, that's where pace can be consistent. But as soon as we introduce something like a hill or wind or possibly even sand, that's where pace can get skewed. So that's where running power comes into play where we can use that to measure the amount of work that we're doing. So for example, if I'm on flat ground and my power is around 200 watts, I could be doing, let's say, an eight minute pace. But if I'm on a hilly terrain, if I'm doing that same 200 watts, well, my pace is going to be slower at about nine minutes. So that's where I can use running power as the indicator indicator of the level of work I want to do versus pace. And the same thing goes for hilly terrain or varying road surfaces. Now this gets us to sort of the geeky part of this video. So running power, it can be measured from many places on the body. So the Apple Watch is going to be measured on the wrist and then companies like Chorus and Polar, they also do the same thing. And then companies like Garmin, they have a chest heart rate strap as well as another pod that you can attach to the body where running power can be measured. And then there's also foot pods. And to complicate things further, each company has kind of come up with their own number in terms of what running power should be. And the reason for this is that there's no industry standard. 
standard. Now, that's not necessarily important though, because what is important are the trends in running power. So if I'm going uphill and working a lot, my running power number should be higher. But if I'm going downhill and kind of cruising, my running power should be lower. Now, with all the charts I'm about to show you to collect and analyze this data, I need to give a quick shout out to the developer of the HealthFit app that's available on the App Store. He isn't sponsoring this video or anything like that, but I just have to give a quick thanks because without that app, I wouldn't be able to show you this data. So if we look at this chart right here, what we can see is that there's quite different numbers from each of the devices from different companies at one given point in time. However, we can also see that the trends for the most part line up. So like in each of these increases in power, each one of these devices is showing that my power is increasing. That's really the important thing here versus the actual number, which will differ from device to device. But the Apple Watch, as you can see, does measure all these changes in power along with the trends that we see from the other devices for the most part. Now, the one thing to note about running power on an Apple Watch, at least for the moment, is that it's truly just running power. It's not calculating this during walking. Like here at the end of this run, as I started walking, both the Series 6 and the Series 7 I was using were showing no power, whereas the other sensors I was using were reporting something. And as we all know, there's some work involved with walking. So for the moment, Apple Watches won't be reporting power for those occasions, but I'd love to see that change in the future. And by the way, I tried everything from a slow walk on the beach to a brisk walk to the most hip-inducing race walk, and no power was being reported. So the Apple Watch truly does know if you're running or not. It's kind of crazy. Anyhow, that's just a quick rundown of the new running features with the Watch OS 9 that you can get today. And there's even some more features that are coming a bit later on down the road. So make sure to subscribe to get a notification when those videos come out. And if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.